and welcome to my channel, Diane's Sewing Room. Here I share my love of sewing and if you're here for the first time, welcome and if you're returning, welcome back. So in my last video, I said that my friend had let me borrow this book, Make It Simple by Tilly and the Buttons. And the first thing that I'm going to make out of this is this Bertha cardigan. So I think that'll be really useful for the autumn winter. And what I'm going to be using is this fabulous fabric. I'll put it up a little bit so you can see. So it's sort of a mustard with a, I think that's either, it's either brown or sort of a black. I think it's more brown actually. And pink spot. Can you see that clearly? And on the back of it, it's a bit furry. So it's a really nice fabric. So I'm going to be using that to make my cardigan. And I've printed off my piece already. So what I always do is use some baking paper. I don't buy specialist paper. And I've got those in here. And I won't leave this like this. When I've finished, I'll print off a proper picture of it on and print off the name of the style of the pattern. But for now, I've just wrote on this envelope so I know what it is, that I need one and a half metres, that it's the Bertha cardigan from Make It Simple. And then, like I said, when I've finished, I'll print off a proper cover for that to keep with all my other patterns. So here it all is laid out. Now, I ordered... 1.3 rather than 1.4 which is what it says on the pattern. I had some um, paper left over from another pattern so no I didn't use um, baking paper for this one that's why it's got some grids on it. It was another pattern like a standard bought pattern and it was all the bits that were left around the edge there was quite a lot left with these grids on that's why the grids are on some of it and not on all of it and I cut those pieces up and saved them so that's what I did this time with this and I cut this out last week and I used that paper. So that's why there's some markings on it. It's leftover bits. So I've managed to get it out of the 1.3. So you've got your sleeves and the markings for the front and back. Two sleeves. Then you've got the back piece which is cut on the fold. This is the front of the cardigan. Cutting two of this one. We've got the cuffs, again you cut two. This is the neckband, you're going to cut two of this one. And this is the band that joins the bodice at the bottom, so it goes all the way around the bottom. So just those few pieces, no interfacings or anything like that. So I've got my back piece opened out on the table here. And now I'm going to attach my sleeves to it, so I'll show you that now. Here look, you've got your back piece and you've got two notches here. So here is one of your raglan sleeves and you've got two notches. So we've got right sides facing and you're matching those two notches there, look. So pin it all the way down, first of all. So all these instructions are in the book, but sometimes I think it's just nice to watch someone else doing it, especially if you were a beginner. Now we're going to stitch that in place now. So I've changed my needle to a universal size 90, so it's a little thicker than the usual needle that I would normally use, which would be about 70. This is quite a thick fabric, so you might want to play around and test your needles first. Also, you might want to change to a slight stretch stitch because this fabric has got a little bit of give in it. Or you could do uh, a very small zigzag stitch, that would help. So have a little play around first. It's not that stretchy, so you're not going to be pulling it a lot, but you might want to just test it before you begin. <laughs> to pin on your front pieces so this is the front of your cardigan matching it up with the edge of the raglan on the other side right sides facing and stitch that in place Now 
this is your back and this is your front piece. You're going to flip it over so that you're folding your sleeve in half like this and you're going to match that side seam here. So this is under your arm and you're going to put a pin in there to keep that together. You can pin down your side. And then here's your sleeve. Now you're going to stitch in one continuous seam along your sleeve, reinforce at the underarm here, and then down your side seam. You can do that on an overlocker, but if you do it on a regular machine, trim away the allowance after. So here you want a back tack because it gets sort of more strain on it under your arm. Open your cardigan, you've got right side facing up like this and you're going to fold your hemband in half lengthways like this and then you've got your notches. So see that your notches line up and then you're going to flip it over Make sure this notch lines up here and this notch lines up here and you're going to pin that in place. Lay both of your neckband pieces together, right sides facing, and you're going to stitch round this triangular part. Trim that and turn it outwards. Check that everything's lying flat. Now you're going to stitch across each end. trim oops wrong way going to turn this to the right side you can pin it down this side first and then you're going to press it flat so you might want to pin it first to make sure that everything stays lined up pin your neck band to your jacket front now what you want to do is make sure that you line up that center back with the center back of your cardigan here do that first and also the bottom part when you've got that lined up you can pin the rest of it so easing it to fit it is quite a good fit anyway and it'll look like this then when you turn it over now stitch that in place you can do a few stitches at the bottom here to keep that inside seam from rolling towards the front then you can either edge it make sure you trim it or you can stitch it down by hand on the inside i think what i'll do is i might top stitch mine on the outside after to keep it from moving around but you don't have to Make up your cuffs by joining the long edge, matching your notches, so you can trim away some of that bulk. through. This will form your cuff and this here, this seam goes to your underarm so when you pin it now you want to be lining up that seam there with your underarm seam. 
So get it all straight first of all. You might want to just put some basting stitches around the top of that to keep it from moving around. Line up your underarm seam with your cuff. So I've turned my cuff and I've pushed it along the sleeve that way. So my sleeve is like that and the cuff will be like that. So if you push it back the other way, so it's going up the arm, then you've got these raw edges together and we're going to stitch it around there. Stabbing myself with the pins as I go. It's quite thick here so you might want to be careful in places you don't break your needle. Just walk, walk it over at the thickest parts. When you pull it through it'll look like this. So here it is finished. And I've changed out my dress for a minute just to avoid the clashing prints. And it's very warm. And I like the shape and it's very comfy as well. Well, I hope that was useful today. Have you made this? Let me know how you got on and what kind of fabric you used. This one is particularly thick and furry on the inside, which is what I wanted for the autumn winter because it's going to be really cold when we can't have the heating on here in the UK because the energy prices are so high. <laughs> so I want to make a few of these so I can layer up. So that's why I've made it from this particular fabric. I know it would probably look really nice in a more floaty one. This one is quite heavy, but I do like it. I like the colour. I think it'll be bright in the winter months. And I like the feel of it because it's sort of furry on the inside. So I enjoyed making that today and I hope to be back soon and I'm going to make another make out of this book. So I'll share that with you maybe in the next week or so. So thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this and I'll be back soon. Bye for now.